Hello and welcome to the third of Voxer Gaming's Carnage Specials. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and we are here with game two between these two players. First up is our Pink Terran. He is, of course, a member of Team Carnage, the UK's best StarCraft II team. His name is Jimmy! And he is up against our Protoss, who is currently one game down in this best of three series. His name is Randy. So, in our last game, we saw it go 40 minutes. We saw the incredible late game of Jimmy with Battlecruiser Ghost taking down the Charge Lot Archon High Templar Colossus of Randy with every single upgrade known to man being uh, researched during that game. So the question is, as Randy, what do you do in game two? Like, Protoss late game is so strong against Terran, but despite the game going 40 minutes, Jimmy just totally outclassed him. His control was better, his decision making was better, and his unit composition, it turned out, was better. So if, if you're Randy, what do you do in this game? I'm thinking maybe, maybe some cheese, you know? It's a best of three against a player that doesn't know you. Maybe drop a four gate. Ohana's pretty good for a four gate. It has this wide ramp here. Uh, has the neutral. Uh, it has the. Um, yeah, it has the rocks here. That's what I was looking for. It has the rocks at the back as well. This is a pretty good map to cheese on, especially as it's a two v two. But it looks like Randy is just going to go expand first. In fact, wow. So expanding before even a gateway is done, that is pretty ballsy. Because you never know when a Terran is just about to two racks you. Like, Terrans have so many good one-base strategies. And that's another thing. Does, does Jimmy do something like that? Does Jimmy do a one-base all-in? At this forge again, what is going on with this? I don't get this at all. I'm sorry, I do not get this opening whatsoever. I don't think this holds. I think if you get two racks, you lose. If you go Nexus first, then Forge. I think you just... I think that's it. I think that's just Insta-GG. So, I mean, I'd have to see it used. Because I just never see this build. I never see the Nexus first into Forge, into Gateway from a Protoss. It's so strange. But he is going to Chrono Boost out some probes. So, Randy, it seems, is going for the economy yet again. Jimmy with the one racks expand and go. Oh, well, not expanded yet, but he will expand because that's what they do. It's just every Terran build is a one racks expand. He's going to expand before he gets the second Marauder, so, yep, now is the time to expand. And now drops a reactor. I like that lifting up one barracks to make the reactor while using the other to make the, uh, the making the other on the tech lab it means you get them out quicker. It means you get the reactor out quicker and can start making marines. Something I've not seen too often, but I do really like that from Jimmy. That's good play. And we have the expansion going up. So all in all, it looks exactly the same as last game, and I'd be quite happy with that. I'd love to see a 40-minute game on Ohana. I think I've yet to see a game go that long on this map. It is. Fairly small uh, by current map making standards. Of course, it is no uh, steps of war. Oh, the Marauder catches that probe, so that probe is not going to see anything. Randy has no vision whatsoever of this base. Look at that, he doesn't know anything. He knows there was a command sent out and he, he knew there was a tech lab anyway, but he would have done by seeing the Marauder. That is it, he doesn't have a clue. And oh, factory! So, this is going to be an earlier starport from Jimmy, rather than going uh, three barracks first. Perhaps mixing in some Banshees with this? It's possible. I wouldn't expect it, though. We shall see. I imagine it will just go into Medivax and perhaps do some kind of drop. Um, Ohana's very small, though. Ohana, as you can see, there's no real space around here to do effective drop or Banshee play. This is uh, the kind of map where you are much better just doing a straight up attack. We'll see. Yep, reactor going down on the factory. So, it's just going to be Medivac. Randy, it seems, is doing the exact same build as yesterday. 
is yesterday. Sorry, I'm so used to casting one replay a day, so uh, <laughs> that I just slip into these patterns, even though I just recorded it. I finished recording that video like seven blizzard minutes ago. Now, Randy's going the same build as game one. He's getting the, the, the forge, he's getting the plus one armor. I mean, I like an early forge. That is such an early forge. It just feels very dangerous to me. He's getting uh, a robo this time, though. Did he get a robo last time? Yeah, he must have done, because I was seeing observers from quite early on. And Jimmy's going to push out. Jimmy's got no medevacs yet, though, so he's just using this for map control. Stim is not done. This probe is going to come out now and see, holy crap, there's a ton of units at the front of my base. What will Randy do to respond? He will do nothing. Randy has got a game plan mapped out and he's just going to do what he wants. Walks in two sentries now so we can theoretically force field this ramp if his force fields are placed right. And we have a Twilight Council going down. This is the exact same build as game one. It didn't work then. I'm not 100% confident it's going to work now. Uh, we have a factory flying about. Steam is done. Combat shields are on the way. Okay, immortals. Okay, we didn't have immortals yesterday. So that's new. I don't recall them all. I said yesterday again. I'm so sorry, guys. Like, I'm so not used to that at all. In game one, I'm really going to have to uh, think about what I'm saying. And now, oh, Jimmy's going to do a drop. Jimmy's going to do a drop. Get seen by this pylon. He's going to come in and just take it down, though. So that is going to hurt Randy. That is so annoying, losing pylons like that. Now, he isn't supply blocked, so he is safe. He can continue to warp in units. And wow, picks them off. The Immortal, they're doing a ton of damage. Immortal's so, so good against Terran armies. And now this is nice from Jimmy. He's going to land the factory at the third base. So he's going to force Randy to kill it before he can drop a third Nexus down. We have Charge on the way. We have Protoss Ground Weapons level 1 on the way. And a couple more gateways coming. So again... We have a nice little drop at the back, stopping mining for now. And once again, he picks up and leaves. One marine left behind. There's always a unit that gets left behind. Ooh, dropping the marauders there. Probably not the best of ideas, as they do now die horrifically. Let me just check what he killed with that. Nine workers killed so far for Jimmy. That's not too bad. Probably not worth losing that many units, but when you have such good bioproduction, you can probably afford to anyway. So we'll try and come in here and take down the cannons. Unfortunately for him, there are too many units. Nice force field, uh, so he does catch a couple more units than he would have otherwise. But we have more Immortals on the way. <clears throat> we have infantry weapons level 1 over half complete now. We have a third going down for Jimmy. Jimmy wants to get this economic advantage. I'm sorry about the yawning, by the way, guys. I'm working so hard at the moment. I'm doing 30 hours a week in one job. I'm making... Five videos a week um, for Vox Gaming and Vapor. Plus, I'm doing these Carnage videos, and you know, I'm trying to also somehow have a life in between that. I'm still commentating for XW. I'm still attending Future Shark, Ugh. and of course, we are now rebooting www.scforum.eu. So I'll have more details on that in the near future. Keep an eye on youtubecom forward Gaming for more on that in the coming day. Of course, you can also just check out www.scforum.eu for more information on that as well. So here we see Zealots, Immortals, Stalkers, Sentries. So this is interesting, going the Immortal route so far, rather than the High Templar Archon, and now he's going to engage. Zealots going in, but getting picked off. This is an interesting timing for him. Uh, Grand Armor level 2 is on the way. Plus 1 attack had just finished. And of course, once again, Jimmy is behind in the upgrades. It's so easy to get ahead as a process to upgrade. Especially when you go with that very early forward. Now there is a forward pylon down here. So it looks like G uh, Randy wants to commit to this attack somewhat. Jimmy's army being pulled out of position and now Randy's going to have the high ground advantage, but all these SCVs being pulled now. Jimmy's going to lose a lot of SCVs, whatever happens here. Can he hold this though? Man, that is a lot of SCVs to lose. 
Jimmy trying desperately to hold. He is stimming. He's backed into a corner. All of these Marines and Marauders are dying now. He needs to lift them up and get them into the main. Oh my god, Jimmy is being destroyed here. Randy, with this wonderful plus one weapons timing attack, he's getting so far ahead. Plus one defense is nearly done for Jimmy, but it may be too late. So many SCVs going down. Oh, Jimmy is just losing so much economy, so much money, so much mining time. But he's not even mining, he's got one SCV mining at this point. The orbital, oh, the orbital goes down, he didn't even lift it. Jimmy is failing here, Jimmy is failing miserably. He's trying everything to hold this main base, but it's so hard. Once your opponent is inside and around the production facilities, they can just pick up units as they spawn. Jimmy is using every ounce of his micro ability to hold this, but damn, that is so painful. Let's take a look. 56 workers killed by Randy. Man, Jimmy's going to have to do a lot to come back from here. Luckily for him, he was on three base, so he can land this and try and pump out some SCVs again. Randy cannot yet expand to this location because the factory is there. But the question is, is he going to expand or is he just going to try and kill him? Uh, I would suggest it's like, holy crap, Jimmy is going to push out now. Jimmy's going to try and apply some pressure with the units he has left. I'm not sure this is wise. It's probably a good idea. But if he controls this badly, if he loses this, ah, oh, it's going to be so bad for him. Templar Archives is finishing so we can have our Archons ready as well. We could have Archons out by the time Jimmy's attack hits. Obviously, uh, Psystorm not being made yet, so they will not have Psystorm. Only warping in Zealots at the moment, though. Not warping in High Templar just yet. This is tense. Jimmy was so close to dying there. He's got to do something to get himself back in this game right now. It is 55 probes to just 11 SEVs. Jimmy, Jimmy, you've got to do something. You can't just sit back and let Randy do what he wants. Randy is going to tech up in his base. He's going to expand when he wants. I don't know why he hasn't moved down and killed this factory yet and expanded. He's got the money, he's got the ability, he's perfectly safe. As it is, he's just going to move out with his units instead and take down these rocks. Perhaps wants to take a fourth. Jimmy's going to come in from behind him. If Jimmy can somehow pick off this army, somehow he may just get back into this game. I don't know how though. Storm is on the way. We have a Ghost Academy on the way for Jimmy. But, uh, is it going to be enough? This I just don't know what Jimmy's going to do at this point. I don't know him well enough as a player to know if he can pull it back from this situation. He's moving around on the map with this small force of units. But of course, the longer he moves around with them, the less and less effective they become. And now we have Archons out. I just don't think he's going to be able to do anything. Perhaps, perhaps if he'd attacked just at that moment, right before, before the Templar Archives... Uh, we're done before. There were Archons out, just maybe. But right now, Randy is pushing him back towards his base. He's got two Immortals, he's got two Archons, he's got a ton of charge lots. Jimmy tries to stand and fight, but it's not going to be enough. We have bunkers going down at the front, three bunkers, but they aren't going to finish in time. These units are going to go down. This is a nice choke he's created, though, making it hard for those zealots to attack, and Randy just backs off. Wise move from Randy there. Attacking into that choke was not the best of ideas. So backing off there, while he has the advantage, now this factory is going to die, or at the very least it's going to lift and move, so Randy can expand when he wants to, and Jimmy is going to struggle to pull this back. We are now at 18 SCVs and 2 mules versus 56 probes. We have pylons at the, we have a pylon, sorry, at the back of the third. Jimmy, unfortunately, is going to get spotted. This drop will be seen. So, time to abandon that. That is not going to work. Holy crap, can you... L no, you can't land on that. That was so weird. I've never even looked at that before. Ohana, a pretty new map in the map pool. And Randy's going to move out again. <sighs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. He's getting Mobius Reactor, but is it going to be enough? I've said that about so much stuff. I'm just so tense. Randy has now expanded, but now would be a great time for him to put some more pressure on. He needs to keep Jimmy inside that two bases. If, if he can do that, I really think he's going to take this game, unfortunately. We have Terran Infantry Weapons Level 3 and Infantry Armor Level 2 started. But Randy is going to apply that pressure. He's going to move up into the natural. Just moving around the bunkers. Oh, the bunkers just die so quickly. 
to these upgraded units. We have them at 2-2, Jimmy GG's, and unfortunately, Randy ties this series one all. Our Team Carnage player there going down in game two, which means we will go to a final and deciding game. Uh, really nice play from Randy there. That was a really nice, uh, well-timed attack. And that's a lot better than I saw him play in the first game. That was his problem in the first game. He sat back and defended, but he never applied any real pressure. And in this game, he did the same build, but applied pressure on that plus one weapons timing and just tore Jimmy apart. He caught Jimmy unawares, and unfortunately, Jimmy fell in game two. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back very shortly with game number three.